Okay, let me ask you a question. How often do you finish a game with an inventory that looks something like this? Mess. It happens to me all the time, and that's because I almost never use consumable items. While there are a few exceptions, pretty much as soon as I get one, it sits in my inventory gathering dust. And that has me wondering, is this a fault with the way a lot of games are designed, or is it a problem created by players like me? So join me as I explore whether or not it is all my fault. While consumable items operate differently across various games and genres, one common factor always holds true. The more often a player is put into a situation where they need to use an item, the more often they will use that item. Which, yeah, duh. Items that address specific problems like having low health or suffering some sort of status ailment get used frequently because A, players are put at a huge disadvantage if they don't address the issue, and B, it's obvious when players should use them. If a character is poisoned, use an antidote or lose health every few seconds. If cursed, use a purging stone or have half HP. If blinded, use eye drops or miss every single attack. By providing a clear solution to a problem, players know that as soon as an issue arises, they need to address it. These are what I'll call reactive items. Items, which, as the name suggests, are items that react to some sort of affliction. Of all kinds of consumables, reactive ones are what I find myself using the most, especially in early parts of a game before I found more reliable ways like spells or gear to deal with a problem. On the other side of things are what I'll call active items, which are items that the player uses to gain some sort of advantage, whether it be augmenting a character's stats and abilities or putting an enemy at some sort of disadvantage from a debuff or damage. These kinds of items are usually the most interesting because unlike reactive items, which really just set a character back to where they started, active items can change up gameplay, allowing for more ways to interact with the world. Essentially, reactive items sustain, while active items enhance. Despite that, I almost never use active items, because in most games, I never need to. I wait and wait for a moment where I will, but more often than not, that moment never comes, because most games seem to be designed to be beaten without needing any sort of boost. Active items are meant to make various situations easier for players, but if the game is already relatively easy, then there's no real reason to use them. Why waste an item when hitting baddies with a sword gets the job done? So my question is, what can games do to encourage players like me to use active items more often? The best answer I have is by disrupting the repetitive yet effective strategies players fall into, and one of the best ways to do that is by adding difficulty spikes throughout a game. There are a ton of different ways to make a game more difficult, and every game will call for a different solution. But regardless, for active items to matter, there needs to be some sort of urgency to use them, which difficulty can provide. When players actually have something to lose by not using an active item, they will use them more frequently. I've started to get into the habit of choosing harder difficulties whenever get the option to, because I find they typically push players to interact with more in-game systems than easier modes do. Take The Witcher 3. In it, Geralt can create and drink potions and decoctions, which do everything from giving him health to increasing the amount of damage he does while on horseback. The effects are vast, and a lot of them are useful in very specific situations. Each potion and decoction has a different toxicity level, making it so Geralt can only use a certain amount before being poisoned and losing health, meaning the player really needs to prioritize what they are choosing to have Geralt drink. On my first playthrough, which was on normal, I found myself really only using the health potions, because I was able to muscle my way through everything fairly easily, and I didn't want to spend time gathering supplies to make consumables that would only make things feel easier. This bummed me out, because I like the idea of researching a monster's strengths and weaknesses and then gathering supplies to create something that would be effective against them, but doing it never seemed like a good use of my time. Since then, I started a file on a higher difficulty and had an entirely different experience, one where I constantly found myself crafting potions and oils in order to not get obliterated by every enemy in the world. I interacted with systems and items that I had previously ignored, and I enjoyed the game much more because of it. My experience with The Witcher 3 helped me realize that active consumables often act as a way to accomplish accommodate different kinds of players, and to get the most use out of an item, players need to know what difficulty is right for them. For whatever reason, I've always found it daunting to choose a difficulty above normal on my first playthrough, but with most games, playing on normal just leads me to fall into easy and uninteresting patterns until I beat them. I think adding more customization to difficulty could make things less daunting. Instead of just having progressively harder modes where everything becomes more difficult, a lot of games could benefit greatly from having different elements that the player can toggle. For example, Dragon Quest XI gives players a variety of options, from earning less experience points from easy fights to not 
not letting the player flee from battles. A system like this lets players consider what aspects of difficulty they would like to engage with, allowing them to curate a challenging experience without having to suffer through aspects they don't want to deal with, like enemies with absurdly high health that aren't challenging to beat, just time consuming. With more customization, players can find that perfect balance that gets them to engage with every aspect of a game. On top of difficulty, it's also good when games give an item multiple purposes. A solid example of this comes from the greatest Earthbound inspired RPG ever made, Lisa. One of the major consumables in Lisa is called Joy. Any character who uses it becomes incredibly powerful for a handful of turns, which can be a lifesaver due to how difficult the encounters are. What makes Joy even more interesting is that characters become addicted to it, and if they don't get another fix, they'll go through withdrawals and become less powerful for a handful of turns. This gets the player to think a lot about Joy management. If they don't control the pace of each battle, the party can get messed up quickly, and in some cases, characters can permanently die, making Joy an incredibly useful useful way to get out of a bad spot. It also gets players to consider if it is best to save Joy only for those tough situations, or to use it more often in order to avoid characters going into withdrawal. Even if the player chooses not to use Joy, there are moments in the game when the main character is forced to have it, meaning no matter what, he will go through withdrawals at some point, tempting the player to use it. By giving Joy both active and reactive aspects, Lisa solves issues common with both kinds of items. It gives players a reason to use Joy because it remedies a problem and and it leads to a more interesting result than just being back to normal. Along with this, Lisa ties joy into its narrative. It's a commodity that is constantly talked about, and players are regularly reminded that using it will lead to ruin. But they are also put into situations that are exceedingly difficult to get through without it, acting as an interesting view of addiction. When done right, consumable items can have a major impact on both gameplay and narrative, creating full experiences more personalized to the player. Of course, there are other ways games can make active items feel more important aside from difficult encounters. Consider Breath of the Wild. It made nearly every item in the game a consumable item. Swords, shields, food, elixirs, all of them have limited uses, which admittedly can be a little frustrating at times, but it does get players in the mindset that nothing is too precious to hold on to forever. On top of this, it is really easy to replenish supplies, making it so there is no real fear about wasting something useful. Furthermore, the low durability of Link's weapons often leave players with a weak arsenal, making it far more important to power Link up through food and elixirs to get through certain situations. Breath of the Wild also creates optional obstacles that can really only be overcome with active items. For example, dishes and elixirs that increase speed and stamina make it possible for Link to get to places that would otherwise be out of reach, which in turn almost always leads to some sort of useful secret and reward. Lastly, due to the fact that Breath of the Wild doesn't require players to complete any sort of quest line in order to beat the final boss, it is possible to just stock up on active items that allow Link to hit harder, move faster, and glide longer to beat the game. All of these things give players a lot of choices in how they want to play, while also providing good reasons to use consumable items. With all of this said, it's really hard to strike the perfect balance that encourages players to use active items. If a game makes things too easy, players won't need them, but if it makes things too punishing, players will be afraid to waste them. Ultimately, the best way to get players to use the various things in their toolkit is by providing challenges where they need to think creatively, challenges that have and require many different solutions. When games don't have these challenges, using consumable items just makes an easy task even easier. So to go back to my original question of, is this all my fault? I'm still not entirely sure. I think a lot of games aren't balanced in terms of difficulty as well as they could be. And while it's good for games to have various difficulty options, most would benefit greatly from offering more customization. When games don't provide players with strong and diverse challenges, consumable items in the systems that exist around them like crafting and even buying and selling things lose some of their value. With that said, items in games are included for different reasons. And while I love when they add to a narrative, offer different ways to engage with the world, and help me overcome challenges, the fact of the matter is that they aren't always made for a player like me. I guarantee that there are items in games that I might never get any use out of that a different player uses all the time. I think I sometimes focus a little too much on time efficiency when playing a game and not always on, you know, having fun. So while there are definitely things games could improve on in terms of their consumable items, I need to be better at doing things in games simply because they're enjoyable. I guess what I'm trying to say is... Sometimes you just need to inject yourself with some red stuff and kick the shit out of people for the sheer fun of it. Thanks for watching. 
If you'd like to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon. There are rewards like getting every episode a day early and getting access to a patron-only Q&A podcast. So if that interests you, look into it. Pretty much the more support I get from Patreon, the more often I can put out videos. Also, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, check out my podcast Once Upon a Roll. Each episode has a new guest and adventure, and it's a fun time. Anyway, I hope you have a great day and or night, and I will see you in the next one.